Here we are today, looking at taking a walk around my father's 40 foot steamboat project. The hull is a 40 foot ex Columbia River log tug. My dad's done some su substantial work on the superstructure. All the superstructure, everything but the hull. It was all my dad's work. And even parts of the hall are my father's work. His name's Stephen Harcourt. Here's a prop, four foot diameter. It's gonna be repitched to about 48 inches probably. That's one boiler that we have for it that we might use. It's a 200 square foot heating surface three pass horizontal fire tube uh, made by the Kiwani Boiler Corporation. We may or may not use it. So some of the steel that was removed from the hull. Shaft log. You can see some of the replating my father did on the on the stern area here. It was a tunnel stern as you can see here and it used to go down more and then fl flat on the sides but he had to replate it anyway, so he uh, removed all that material and modified it to more of a fantail. Boiler is four feet in diameter, seven and a half feet long. Other boiler we have is a water tube boiler built by John York of St. Helena, California. It's a uh, Similar to a Worthington water tube boiler. It's got two banks that are kind of like a BMW, but they're, they're uh, I guess you say transverse. Here's one of the two banks. This is one of the engines we have for it. This is the first one we got. This is a French compound built by the Clapardet uh, company of Argentina, France near Paris. Um, it is 6 and 10 by 7 inch stroke, uh, built in 1924. Supposedly the guy we got it from got it from a guy who picked it up in Vietnam in the 60s. And uh, my father restored it. Um, it was much, much sorrier shape before. You take the, the tarp off the Doty. This other engine here is a Canadian Doty compound that is more likely going to be the one that's going to be used in the boat. Dimensions are 5 and 10, or 510 by 6 inch stroke. This is the crankshaft for it, built in thrust bearing. But he prefers, or we prefer, the cast back standard columns and the turn front columns. Uh, this will have the feed pump and air pump, or condensate pump, run off the uh, back of the low pressure column off of a walking beam. That's the pump beam, or part of the pump my father's fabricating there. On the, the uh, French compound, it's got the pumps run off a of scotch yoke. You can see it through the plastic there. But this this one has yet to be refurbished like the other one. That's also Stevenson Link reversing gear. Slide valve on high pressure and low pressure like the French compound. None of this superstructure was here when we got the boat. My dad just modified it quite extensively. The only thing that was here when we originally got the boat was this large engine room space. The rest was decked over. You can see it's 
Tom's done quite a bit of metal work in here, cutting out bulkheads or and cutting out old plates or welding new plates and painting this cutty wasn't here in the V berth before. And uh cabin wasn't obviously. But that'll be where the engine sits. Right here will be where the boiler sits. On the side over there will be a hot well. On the side over here near that cardboard box will be the auxiliary pumps, duplex steam pumps for condensate, feed, uh, firefighting, repelling borders as needed. This will be the salon or saloon. We'll have benches on either side that will be able to fold out into beds. There will be beds forward in the V berth. Probably be a head next to the boiler on one side or the other. That will also have a shower in it or possibly a separate shower. Um, here this, my father built this sliding door here. We got the aft deck here. A lot of this is covered up for the winter, waiting for the snow that hasn't come yet. It's January 11th or 12th and there's still no snow, which is a bit unusual for Tahoe. But not unheard of. Probably beginning the next drought cycle. These panels, these wood panels here on, on the three on this side and the three over here on the port will come out. They're just here to for weather protection, but they'll normally this area will normally be open. There'll be a bulkhead right here with a plexiglass window probably, door here and there, and this will be all be open over the engine room area, and then another, another door here and there, closing off the, the forward cabin. And we will carry these, these wooden, I guess you call them bulkheads, on board, so if the weather gets foul, we can always cover up the sides and keep things nice and toasty and dry. But, uh, I think that's it for now. Just imagine one of those big compounds silently running away down in here with a boiler, either wood or uh, oil fired. Crashing away over the waves. Looking over the bows, standing on the cuddy here. Oh, this deck, decking material is a plastic tile material that snaps together. My sister's cut it and put it along here and on the stern outer decking. The whole aft area, the aft saloon, salon, whatever you want to call it, uh, will be paneled in wood. I'll probably panel eventually panel the, the overhead here and probably panel down in the V berth as well. But that will be further down the road. The priority right now is getting the machinery in and 
going steaming, getting it in the water. You can see kind of the shape of the hull. It's 40 feet long, or just under 40 feet long, and about 11 feet wide at the water line, a little bit wider up as you go up to the rub streak. Proper cutter bow. Had a set of dragon's teeth down here from its log logging days, but my father decided to remove them. He didn't want to he didn't like the idea of putting a hole in a plastic boat. I think he should have left them. Contemplating cutting hawse pipes on the port and starboard side. We have a 50 pound Navy style anchor, but we'd like to put, find another one so we can have matching anchors on either side. Look quite nautical, but if not, I'll just lay them on the deck. Well, that is for all for now. Quite the project.